Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of High on Rugs. The Nintendo 64 is my favorite video game console of all time. That's the one I got in 1997, and it's a little dusty, but it still works to this day. Here's my collection of games. Nothing too fancy, but if we look over here, these are the greats. Especially these two, Conker's Bad Fur Day and Paper Mario. The best ones on the console, and I'm willing to fight over that. So let's make a Nintendo 64 logo rug. Now, when I went to go start this project, I realized I did not have enough tufting cloth. However, I had some burlap that I bought when I first started this rug making venture, and I've never used it. So today, we're also going to find out how well burlap works as tufting cloth. So I started off by making my measurements. I believe I went 36 inches by 36 inches, and cut it out to size, and then began stretching it over my frame. Just going around and around, pulling on all the sides until it's nice and tight. As tight as possible. And there's me giving a shrug of not knowing if this is going to work or not. But we have our image pulled up to the projector and projected onto the frame, and we can begin tracing out the design. This one is pretty simple, very boxy, only four colors. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Grabbing the blue yarn and starting to go line by line, filling it in. And right away I was actually astonished by how well the burlap was working. Every line was going super easy as long as I stayed vertical, or horizontal lines. It only really gave me trouble at the very end when I was doing some angular lines. So I would say if you're interested in tufting and you want to try to use burlap because it's a little cheaper, I would simply just go with a design that is pretty angular like this one is. No circles or anything like that. It seemed to want to tear when I did any sort of curves but otherwise it held up really well. It seems like every generation of video gamers has one console that really stuck out to them and defined their gaming childhood. For some people it's the GameCube, for some older people it's the NES or the Super Nintendo, but for me, I got a Nintendo 64 when I was 7 years old in 1997. So that's the one for me. Maybe the graphics are a little outdated today, it doesn't look as hot as it used to, but damn those games are good, and I had a lot of fun playing them. If you saw my collection at the beginning, you could see that I'm missing a couple of really good ones. Mario 64, Majora's Mask, that's another one of my favorites. Don't know what happened to that one, I used to have it. And of course GoldenEye 007, or 007 GoldenEye. That was one my friends and I would always get together just to play some multiplayer. You had four controllers with short cords, we're all sitting around the TV, and everybody knew to get mad at whoever picked Odd Job because they were cheap. But those were the days. They were fun times. And I still play my Nintendo 64 every once in a while. It's just most of the stuff you can just play on your Nintendo Switch now, which is very nice. And already we're onto the green. The blue and the green are the two main colors. And then just a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. As I mentioned earlier, my two favorite games on the Nintendo 64 are Paper Mario and Concrete Bad Fur Day. Paper Mario I think I got for Christmas one year, and I loved it so much I would just sometimes not feel like going to school and I would tell my mom my stomach hurt, and I would stay home and just play Paper Mario all day. And if you haven't played it, check it out. It is on the Switch Nintendo 64 emulator. Definitely worth a playthrough. And Conker's Bad Fur Day. Somehow, this game is still unknown to a lot of people. It came out towards the end of the Nintendo 64's life cycle, right before the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube came out. They might have already even been out. But it sold like trash, and it was kind of just forgotten about. But it was an M-rated platformer, like Banjo-Kazooie on crack, and it had beer drinking, poop throwing, just raunchy, fun stuff. I think I was about 10 years old at the time, it blew my mind. I saw it at Blockbuster, and my, I begged my parents to let me rent it, and somehow they consented, and the rest is history. Never been the same after playing that game. The ending still messes with me. So bittersweet. And if you know, you know. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite Nintendo 64 game is, and feel free to subscribe. That helps me out a lot. 
And you can see as I'm going, I'm not really getting any tear out. There's no stray fibers getting blown out from the burlap. So it really is quite resilient. It just doesn't have that elasticity that the regular tuft and cloth has to handle the curves and such. That's my only complaint, but it's definitely good as a cheaper alternative. I will say that much. And now we're on to the yellow, just filling in the tops, the four squares. With two done, we just have two more to go. And just like that, all four colors are done. And I thought it looked a little plain, I wanted it to have a nice border. So I busted out some black yarn, just to give it a nice outline. Just running a quick border all the way around. And off camera I went one line thicker all the way around, just to give me a little bit more to roll over onto the edge. And now we're already gluing it up. I have my Roberts 3095 carpet adhesive that I always use. Just sticking my hand right in the bucket and smearing it on. Making sure everything is super saturated so nothing gets pulled out later. In a quick fade and it's the next day, the glue is dried. I'm wearing the same clothes, don't give me a hard time about it. But we're pulling it off the frame. And laying it down to start the finishing process. Just cutting off some of the excess burlap around the design. And I went ahead and cut it into bite-sized pieces following all the angles. And now we can bust out our hot glue gun and glue down each and every piece, rolling it over slightly for that nice waterfall edge. And with that, we're already ready to start putting the backing on. Trying out this technique again, seemed to work pretty good last time. Plopped it down, trace around it with a fat sharpie, and then using my scissors I cut slightly inside the lines. That way it's a bit smaller and it will conform to the border. And once it's cut the size we can pull out the spray adhesive, spray both sides, and slap it down. Now all that's left to do is shave it up a little bit. Just going row by row taking down all the high spots, and I shave in between all the lines to crisp them up a little bit. And after that, it's done. And that's how you make a Nintendo 64 logo rug. And I think it came out looking pretty nice. All the lines look pretty crisp. The black border kind of pulls the whole thing together in my opinion. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to put this in my game room and hopefully enjoy it for years to come. Just like with the Nintendo 64 itself. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a like, maybe subscribe, and let me know in the comments what your favorite N64 game is. And until next time, I'll see you back here with some more goofy rugs.